This is a um, uh, research paper published in 2012 by uh, Takano, and uh, they were interested in uh, looking at the effect of acupuncture needling in Summit 36, and uh, they found that it actually increases local levels of adenosine. Adenosine as in part of uh, adenosine triphosphate, also known as ATP, the energy currency of the body. It's kind of cool that ATP, the energy related to qi, we know Summit 36 related to tonifying qi, so uh, one can help, you know, make the comparison that she is maybe ATP, but that's, you know, we're going to save that for, for other scholars to debate. But the interesting thing about this paper is that in order to, to measure the changes in adenosine locally, they put the needle in stomach 36, but look at the way they define where stomach 36 is located. So suddenly the needle is inserted at approximately three to four and a half centimeters or 33 to 45 millimeters into the deep peroneal nerve and arteries. And in, in other words, into the deep peroneal neurovascular bundle. And uh, so it, it is stimulation of the deep peroneal nerve that is resulting in the changes that, um, that they consider stomach 36, but also the changes in adenosine levels inside the body. Now, you got to bear in mind that deep peroneal nerve is... Uh, connects all the way from the level of the fibula into the top of the, the foot. So what would then be the difference between stomach 36 and let's say stomach 37 and stomach 38 that are also along the, the deep peroneal nerve? So surely there's got to be a reason why the, the ancients passed down so many points because otherwise, why, why, just, why do you need so many? Stomach 36 would be good enough, right? So the answer to that comes from the dissections that we've done in our own group. So here you're seeing um, the, um, the lower leg and this white structure here is the tibia bone. This, this asterisk over here is the, is the head of the fibula. And coming behind the head of the fibula is the common peroneal nerve, which divides into C1 and C2, which is a superficial peroneal nerve and deep peroneal nerve. So the deep peroneal nerve enters underneath the um, the uh, um, uh, lateral compartment muscles, uh, which is the peroneus muscles, and then emer and they uh, continues towards tibialis anterior, which is the muscle for dorsiflexion of the ankle. But very interestingly, at this level, the deep peroneal nerve actually ramifies or arborizes uh, in, 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 into at least three different branches, which is what we call a trifurcation, and uh, so. That makes stomach 36 very interesting because it's very neurologically rich, okay? And uh, now what, is, what do these branches ramify into? I'm gonna change a different perspective now. You're looking at the, the lower leg now lying sideways where the foot is on the left side of the screen and the knee is on the right side of the screen. And again, this white structure over here on top, uh, labeled by C is a tibia, um, tibia bone right adjacent to his tibia's interior muscle. And this, this bone over here, label B, is the uh, fibula. And the structure here, A, is the common peroneal nerve that comes behind the fibula. And he notices that it starts to ramify. Okay, so what do they ramify into? At the level of stomach 36 is where the, where the ram trifurcation happens. And it, and it sends a branch into the tibia's interior. Then it sends branches into an area that overlaps stomach 37, this muscle over here is the extensive digital torum that allows you to have extension of the second through fifth toe. And then the, the nerve continues, okay? And then it sends a branch into this muscle F over here, which as you can see is the extensor halicus muscle, which extends the big toe. And then finally the nerve can travel together with the vessel, continue distally into the top of the foot. So it is when I made this discovery, I was also totally in awe of how amazing ancient acupuncture anatomists were. They had such amazing understanding of the deep peroneal nerve that they not only passed down the nerve bifurcation, but trifurcation by each individual branches was also passed down as well. So in the next um, slide over here, I'm summarize what I just said um, in terms of the new anatomical significance of these points. Stomach 36 uh, is the deep peroneal nerve at the point of trifurcation, so it would be able to activate the 
tibialis anterior for dorsiflexion, and the first and fifth toe. Now, at the level of stomach 37, when it only has the nerve to the extensor digitorum, obviously it won't be able to activate dorsiflexion of the ankle anymore because it doesn't innervate tibialis anterior. Uh, so it, it'll, it'll still be able to stimulate the first and fifth toe. But then once you pass that innervation to the second and fifth toe from the extensor digitorum, then all you are left is the nerve for the, for the extensor halicus muscle at the level of stomach 38. And therefore, when you stimulate that with the electrical stimulating device, you only see extension of the big toe or the first toe. So I'd like to show you this video here. And I'll explain why the points seem to be a little bit more lateral than, than normal um, uh, in, in, a, in the upcoming slide. But what you're seeing here is stimulation in stomach 36, stomach 37, and stomach 38, okay? So first notice the tendons across the ankle. You'll see that when I stimulate stomach 36, we get dorsiflexion of the ankle, that's tibialis anterior, and those are the tendons extensive digitorum. Then when you stimulate just stomach 37, you get extension of the toes, not as much extension of the halic, uh, uh, and now when you stomach 38, you get only the extension of the big toe. So basically you lose one um, muscle uh, the further you go. So I, I'll play that video one more time for you. Here you see dorsiflexion and toe extension of big and all the rest of the toes. Now you see extension of only second through fifth toe. You don't see big toe extension. And then with stomach 30, you only see big, big toe extension. Now, some of you might say, oh, I see some dorsiflexion of uh, the level of stomach 37 as well. That is because extensive digitorum actually also contributes to dorsiflexion of the ankle. It's just not as powerful as, um, as tibialis anterior. So one, one final time where you see everything, all the three muscles of the anterior compartment being activated. Now you see a stomach 37 only extensor digitorum being activated. And then finally, stomach 38 only extensor halicus being activated. So it goes to show how precise these points are. And the reason why, of course, I can only, in the limitation of time that we have, only show you some interesting ones from the stomach radiant. But this work was done um, with all the points in the body and the, 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 the message is loud and clear that there is absolute neuroanatomical specificity to each acupuncture point. And based on that specificity, we can predict what kind of stimulation that will result. If it's a motor nerve, we will see very unique activation of downstream uh, muscle targets specific to each branch of a nerve. And uh, if it's a sensory nerve, then we'll be able to expect specific numbness or tingling or paresthesia distributions consistent with the known trajectory of those nerves.